dedicated to each and every one of you who appreciate a great glass of wine. You know what I mean? It's Monday. Let's raise a glass to the beginning of another week. It's time to unscrew, uncork, or saber a bottle, and let's begin exploring the wine glass. Today, I continue the conversation with the extremely impressive Natalie McLean. If you didn't listen last week, please go back and hear the beginning of our conversation. You won't be sorry. If you did listen last week, welcome back. Natalie shares more of her incredible wine journey today, including a very special offer to any listener who would like to be a beta reader for her next book. It's easy, it's fun, and you get a sneak peek. Beta reading is an opportunity to let her know your thoughts on the story before it is released. Enjoy the conversation, and while you're listening, please take a moment to rate and review Exploring the Wine Glass. Ratings are now available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Audible. Taking one minute of your time is the only way the algorithms will suggest Exploring the Wine Glass to others. Slancha! Hey everybody, I'm Lori Budd, a UC Davis winemaking program, Som Day service, champagne specialist, and WSET level 2 graduate. You can find Exploring the Wine Glass on all the socials, as well as your favorite podcast catchers. If you haven't subscribed yet, now's the perfect time to swipe, subscribe, rate, and review. I promise I'll never tell you what to drink, but I'll always share what's in my glass. In the, now, your second book, again, um, you know, you're taking it so seriously, um, Unquenchable, A Tipsy Quest for the World's Best Bargain Wines. So that that is very important because not everybody can enjoy that crystal. So. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, and really, Lori, I'm a wine cheapskate at heart. So, you know, <laughs> the best wine is the one somebody else bought for you. So, but um, I think there's some sort of, there's a thrill of the hunt when you can find a wine that tastes twice as as much as it cost. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, any, anybody can splash down a lot of money. Well, some people can for mm-hmm. whatever, Cristal or whatever you're drinking. But to me, it's like the thrill of the hunt. Like if you go to a, a discount warehouse outlet store and you find a Versace jacket that's 20, 10% of its original cost. It's like, there's a story there. I found this jacket, it fit. And I only paid 10%. But there's something thrilling about that. Yeah. You can find the values. Yeah. So I'm always on the hunt. And I think a lot of our listeners, readers want to enjoy wine, but, you know, don't have a trust fund. And so finding those undiscovered gems is part of that. And one of my biggest tips that came out of that book was go south. So a lot of the badger name regions um, in many countries are expensive. So if you think Northern Italy, you know, Tuscany and Piedmont, if you go south, you're going to get deals from Sicily. Even in California, Napa and Sonoma, go south to Vasa Robles or Santa Cruz or wherever, and you're going to find much more affordable wine. Wow, you know, wow. Yeah, I yeah. actually have never thought about that, but that is so yeah. true. Like, as it you're is. talking, my brain is going through the different countries, and it is. It is. It's, you're like France, right. Bordeaux, Burgundy, <laughs> go south, Languedoc, Provence. No. You're going right. to pay a lot less. Yeah. Wow. That, mm-hmm. that's, that is it right there, folks. Worthy <laughs> right there. That's, that's the worthy <laughs> tip of the day. Holy cow. Well, that that's is, your region, too. Paso yeah. Robles, spectacular wines. And, you know, quality to quality, I think, um, underpriced compared to Napa and Sonoma. Just a bit. Just a bit. <laughs> 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 yes, yes, you can. I have, I have some friends up north that keep telling me I should increase the price of of our wines, and I'm like, no, I don't, I don't need to pay, I don't need to charge my customers ninety five dollars for my bottle. Right. Like that's that's to me that's insane. Like yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, thank you, thank um, you for your service. Then, <laughs> <laughs> like that's that's a little bit crazy. Um, <laughs> But the, you know what? On the other end, kudos to them if they're getting it too. You know, it's it's just how you approach your business sense, I guess. You know, sure, sure. Um, but that that is an excellent tip and so spot on that I have never even thought about that. But absolutely, go south. Good. Mm-hmm. And Sicily, oh Etna, oh love it, love yes. it, love it. Beautiful, love beautiful it. island. Um, so also I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to make you blush eventually. I'm going to keep trying. Um, <laughs> I am. I got makeup on. Don't worry. You've done it. <laughs> so the James Beard 
four times. I don't, I, I don't know. That sounds like a record to me. I don't, I don't think anybody has won the James Beard four times. You've got the MFK Fisher Award and the Burt Green Awards, and these are all culinary related awards. And so, obviously, you have a deep affection for food. Mm. So, what? How do you describe that food and wine relationship? So I think like great par partnerships, all great partnerships, they elevate each other. You know, um, who is it? Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. Mm. I, that's often brought up, but peanut butter and jelly, ice cream and chocolate sauce. But I think wine and food, when you've got a great match, give you this sensory cloud of pleasure that you would not get with just the wine alone or just the food alone. It is the interaction, the interplay of all the 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 taste, the texture, um, the weight. And I think there's something that also happens in that you don't satiate out so early of the wine or the food if you are just having those on their own. It's like um, when we put on perfume, at first it's okay. strong, you can smell the perfume, but then you, you, you become oblivious to the perfume. But what happens in food and wine is if you keep alternating it's like a reminder, oh yeah, there's that food taste. Oh yeah, there's that wine taste. It doesn't fade into the background. It's a sensory playground that continues longer in the partnership. I always think of, um, and people laugh at me, but uh, ratatouille. Have you seen oh, ratatouille? Yes, that movie, yes. It's okay. adorable. The cartoon little rat who's yep. the chef. Yeah. Who's the chef. And anyone <laughs> yeah. can cook, right? That's the whole motto of it. Anyone can cook. But the scene where he is trying to teach his brother <laughs> what wine, what, what food is really, right? And he take, gives him a little piece of the strawberry and the brother's like, yeah, blah, 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 you know, and then he gives him a little piece of cheese and the brother's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's got like music notes going up, but then he takes the strawberry and the cheese and he puts them both in and a symphony comes together or, you know, oh, that's um, a great example. And I, I, I absolutely love, love that movie from start to finish. But that scene of, of him trying to explore what food or teach what food can do is, yes. is an amazing scene. So. Oh. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> One Love of my it. favorite movies. Most yes. of my favorite movies are cartoons. <laughs> There's so much more. <laughs> There's so much more that meets the eye to these cartoons, I tell Absolutely. you. Absolutely. <laughs> Many levels. <laughs> yep. So that brings me to when you're cooking dinner, right? So you really, we, we spoke previously and I said that I'm, I'm not really a foodie. I can appreciate food, but there's a lot of foods I don't eat. So that's why I'm a boring food person. But <laughs> when you're cooking a meal... Do you start with the wine and then say, this is the meal I'm going to make with this wine? Or do you start with the food and then say, yeah, I think this is the wine that's going to go with it? So I am a wine first kind of gal, okay. just like I buy earrings or shoes first and then find an outfit that will okay. accommodate them. <laughs> I'm going to sound like some frivolous shopper who just spends her days at outlet stores. Um, but fortunately, my partner, Miles, he is a great cook. I, I don't cook. I pull corks. Um, and he's very adaptable in many aspects of our relationship. So I will pull out a wine, say, what can we, what can you make that will, <laughs> that will go with this? And uh, yeah, he's very good at doing that. So yeah, wine nice. first. Wine first. All right. Okay. And <laughs> you know, it, that is a skill, I think, you know, these chefs that can, you know, you bring, they're doing a wine tasting dinner and they're tasting the wine and they just create quite the thing. And we know that there's those, those basic rules of what goes with what, you know, and things like that, but the, the way they can explore it, it it's a skill. It's a skill. It so is. kudos to it miles. Does. Tell miles. Yes. Good job. I will. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your favorite pairing? Well, Pinot Noir with more Pinot Noir. But, um, <laughs> bum, bum. Uh, Pinot with veal or any dish that doesn't overwhelm the Pinot, because okay. it really is the star of the meal for me, and it's my go-to wine. Um, okay. So, yeah, I, I would say, like, and I, I do love, um, you know, cool climate, California Pinots. Of course, we have lots of great Pinots here in Canada. 
um, and Burgundy if somebody else is buying, of course. Oh, there, yep, there you go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a little funny story of Pinot. Um, when we first started getting into wine, and we would go, we would go visit Napa, Sonoma, and you know the Carneros and things like that, and we would taste Pinot. And every single time I tasted Pinot, I'm like, oh, I don't like this. There's, there's something wrong. Like not wrong, wrong, but like to my palate, there's something wrong with it. No, sure. I don't like this wine. And tasting it, and you know, my husband likes Pinot, and he would like try to sneak one in and go. And I'm like, no, 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 I don't like it. Like even like tasting it, I didn't know I was tasting Pinot. And I'm like, no, 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 I don't like it. There, there's something weird. That's all. I, that's all I kept saying. Weird, weird, weird. And. As we got into wine and we really started learning how to appreciate wine and start doing a little of those wine descriptors going on, what I realized was every time I said, ooh, weird, people said strawberry. Oh. And I am deathly allergic to oh. strawberry. Okay. So now just for people who are listening – Strawberries are not in wine unless you're drinking strawberry wine, okay? Sure. But there is the flavor of strawberry. But because I'm deathly allergic to strawberry, my brain didn't know what that was. It yes. like I you know, it just it just was weird. It, it I had no way of describing what I was tasting because my brain doesn't know strawberry. Right. And once I was able to say it ooh, it's that weird that weird thing again, okay, I can now say that's strawberry. I still don't really know what a strawberry tastes like, but my brain has now been remapped oh, to recognize that sensation or that, that taste to be strawberry. And oh, now wow. I love Pinot. Oh, <laughs> I absolutely great. love Pinot. You can um, reassure your brain you're not going to die of epileptic yeah, shock. Yeah, or it whatever. just yeah. it just was. I don't know what it is. So every time right. I tasted it, I, all I could say is, "No, it's a weird taste. I don't know." You know, and it's right. just and the scientist in me, my brain was remapped to learn. Huh. It was a different way of learning what a strawberry was. Because my palate doesn't know what a strawberry is because, yeah. you know, if I taste it, I don't remember what I taste because I'm too busy shooting myself up with something, you know? <laughs> that's um, fascinating. Yeah. Great and story, that's, yeah. that's why today when people tell me, well, how do you do, how do you know what this tastes like, what this tastes like? One of my favorite things to tell them to do is to, because I'm cheap. All right. You can go to a Whole Foods or a Trader Joe's and go buy all those funky little fruits that are out there and taste what they all taste like so that you your palate learns what it is. But that's probably going to add up to quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But I always tell them, go to Jelly Belly and oh. go pick out jelly beans of all the different flavors that Jelly Belly has yeah. cool. and then taste the jelly bean. And that will tell you what because, I mean, that's the flavor, right? That's so. true. And even though the jelly beans are sweet, if you are eating right. them and then breathing out the retronasal, right, you'll get that aroma mm -hmm. sense of the, the, you know, apart from the sugar of whether right. it's, you know, hot pepper or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. That's a great yeah. idea. Yeah. yeah. But that's, that's my Pinot story. And, you know, it does it. confuse some people. So I always preface it. No, there's no strawberries in there. Yeah. I was not having an allergic reaction. It's just your brain and being the science scientist that I am, that always is an incredible thing. And it teaches you, you can remap your brain. You can, right. You can yeah. always teach a dog, old dog, new tricks. Or to drink Pinot Noir. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. But you're right. Like, and you, you, the scientists, you know better, but like Pinot will have molecular structures that mimic the molecular structure in strawberries. So mm -hmm. it doesn't, it's not strawberry, but it's going to smell or taste like strawberry. And the your, obviously your brain was picking that up going warning danger danger yeah just i don't know yeah. what it is i ju it yeah. just that was the only word i can say no there's something weird in this you know and people at the very beginning people were thinking i was saying it was corked I'm like hmm. no no it's just weird but huh. listening to other people taste which is another great i think another great tip for people who are learning wine a don't be afraid to say what you taste but b listen to what other people s are saying and try to correlate to what you're getting. And then you, you know, you're training your palate. 
Yes. Just like yes. you have to lift muscle, you know, you have to lift weights to get muscles. You got to lift, lift wine to train that palate. <laughs> it's a lot of work, but it's worth it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so now I have to go to the opposite. What is your most disastrous pairing? Right. So I had always heard that you could pair full bodied reds with chocolate. And my big mistake was not picking up full bodied enough um, Cabernet <laughs> and then doing milk chocolate, which was just, it was gross. It was oh. really gross. And so, <laughs> um, but later I learned um, that, you know, not only does say fortified wines, do they work better like port or, or whatever, a banyol, sherry, but you need to get the darkest chocolate you can find if you want to be nice to your wine. So the reason is that dark chocolate, it has the least amount of sugar, the least amount of dairy content versus milk chocolate, which has a lot more. And those things are very, very mean to wine. And so the the combination didn't work. And thank God I wasn't doing it like on Valentine's Day. I would have ruined the <laughs> evening, but it was like, oh, this is just gross. The chocolate was making the wine taste me metallic or something, something weird. Yeah. Um, but I learned. I was scarred, but I learned. <laughs> but it's a memory you will always remember. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's so gross. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Milk milk chocolate, is, if you think about it, you're, it's take a glass of milk and then take a glass of wine or a oh, sip of yes. wine and, you know. Just, yeah, but just don't do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A big A big stop sign needs to be on, on that, you know. <laughs> exactly. A warning. There's, wine bottle should come with a warning. Don't do milk yes. chocolate. Yes, absolutely. I like it. <laughs> so let, let's talk about um, your, your website because it is the largest wine review site based in Canada. You actually have more than 3.2 million visitors a year. And you have a three over 300,000 people signed up for your newsletter. So mm -hmm. obviously people recognize that you are a fantastic source for wine. So how did, how did the website come about and how, how do you manage that? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, my mom's going to love this podcast, Lori. <laughs> Just don't think you should be checking off her little list. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, anyway, um, so I started uh, the website in the Paleolithic era of, of websites, at least in the wine industry. I started one in 2000 when there weren't a lot, um, but I came from high tech. Um, I worked for a computer that was based in Mountain View, California, which is only about an hour from Napa and Sonoma. And I just think websites and social media and mobile apps, they're all they work really well with wine, even though you'd think, oh my gosh, you know, technology, that's new stuff, wine, that's kind of old traditional. But wine, as you know, is just, it it has so much information attached to it. Each bottle, you know, that can have like 30 pieces of info. So if you really want to take a deep dive, technology is your friend. If the user interface, you know, the, the design <laughs> is, is friendly and not confusing. So with with the website one of the first things i did was to create food and wine pairing tools so they're they're there to this day and i i'm always updating them but you can start with a wine or start with a food let's say you start with a food i'm having roast chicken it will take you through through an interactive little matcher there okay you could try chardonnay it's etc and then you can narrow down to what type of chardonnay like what type of style and then it'll take you to the next screen, which would be my latest reviews of that style of Chardonnay. And then you can go another screen, which stores have this Chardonnay in, style, in stock right now. So it's on the mobile apps as well, but it takes you from start to finish. Or you can say, I already have this Chardonnay. What dishes should I be considering? So I just think technology, if it's harnessed, can be our friend um, when it comes to wine, which can be so overwhelming, but can t technology can pinpoint the answers we need or the bottles or the wines we want. That that's incredible to be able to go to one site and and do that. And then I I mean I'm good with computers. Like I'm usually the person in the family and the friends where they're like, how do I do this? And like programs. I'm great at working out programs. But on the on the tailspin, that coding to make that program like, I'm happy when I can put a box around the text on my blog, you know, like, <laughs> woohoo, I HTML'd that, you uh -huh. know. Um, 
you know, or have flashing text, woo, you know. Um, of course, it took me 10 hours to do that, but <laughs> woo, I did it. Um, like that, that's incredible to to have all that in in one resource, but that's got to be mind blowing on the uh, on the back end of yeah. Unfortunately, I that. you know I have an excellent web developer, so I'm not doing the coding. Thank goodness, because I would <laughs> be making a mess of it. But uh, uh, he's fabulous, and he's been with me for like more than 15 years. So it's wow. a, it's a good partnership, and it's constantly being updated, which yes. is is yeah. a phenomenal. Now, is there free access and pay? There's a paywall and free access. So what what's the difference between those two? So I'd say 98% of the content is free, like all the articles, the pairing tools, the mobile apps, etc. So what I charge for, um, and it's a subscription of about $3 a month is my wine reviews from the last 20 days. So the most recent wine reviews, and after that, as they age out 21 days and older, they're free and open access. So that's the subscription, the paywall, paywall part. It's just those last 20 days of reviews. And that's only $3 a month. My goodness, yeah. that's that's like not even a Starbucks. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yes, I like that's, to compare it. That's, yeah. not, that's not even, a, you, you know, a single glass of wine. <laughs> That's true. Right? These days, I, no, that's yeah. a sample taster or something. Not even. Right, that's a taster. Anyway. Yeah. That that's a taster. We <laughs> we just were in Santa Cruz, and uh, you know when we go on vacation, we kind of do some beer tasting also, and we were blown away by the price of the beers. Like it was nine bucks for a pint of beer now. So wow. I'm like, wow, we we need to get this. You know, the the cost things down a bit. We, yeah. This is insane. Everything's this is going insane. up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that that is incredible. So can you just tell, I'll link it in the show notes also, but just where can, what is the website? Because that is a phenomenal resource. Sure. It's my name, which can be spelled a whole lot of ways, but it's <laughs> Natalie McLean. So it's N-A-T-A-L-I-E-M-A-C-L-E-A-N, NatalieMcLean.com. If you if you Google Natalie and wine, I, I think I'll come it, up. It will come up. Yeah. <laughs> It will come up. Trust me, it comes up. It comes up. Yeah. So, and then your podcast, because you obviously have so much spare time on your hands. Right? <laughs> Why not? Your, your podcast is Unreserved Wine Talk, and so which I am honored to have been a guest on. You so, were fabulous. The stories you told, I can't wait to publish that one, Lori. Oh, thank you. Terrific interview. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and so when did you get into podcasting? Were you ahead of the, because you were way ahead of the game with the website. Were you mm -hmm. ahead of the game with the podcast? I had tried back in 2008, but the tools weren't available. It was just painful. Like, mm -hmm. you know, the, the tools we have today make it so much easier. So um, I wasn't as early an adopter of podcasting. I got into it in 2018. Okay. And um, yeah, it's weekly and absolutely love it because most of my uh, episodes are interviews like yours, and it just it allows me to be nosy and impertinent. And especially as an introvert, I get to ask questions I would never ask at a dinner party. Like, you know, what's your best failure, and what did you learn from it? It's like you can't blurt that out over dinner. It's like, what? oh, yes, you can. If, 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 if yes, you can. <laughs> you could, Lori. You're an extrovert. <laughs> me, I just sit there quietly during dinner and hope somebody asks me a question. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, you, you can ask it. Might not go over so well, but you, right. you can ask it. Trust me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Someone needs to be cut off. <laughs> Stop asking those questions. Well, see, see, that's that's the benefit of being an extrovert. When you're an extrovert, nobody knows when you've had too much uh -huh. because right. you're just always right. that way. So that's there's true. really no difference. <laughs> Yeah, they know when I've woken up. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, she's back. Anyway. All right. So being an introvert, I don't know if this is a good thing for an introvert or a bad thing, but if you were stranded on a deserted island, okay, and you could only have one wine, so not like I I'll give you the benefit, one variety. Okay. One variety. doesn't only have to be one wine, one variety, but. 
unlimited supply. You can't get off of the island. You're like Gilligan's Island. You can get all this stuff. You can have radios. You can have all these things, but you can't get off that island. That sounds so, like unlim- heaven for an introvert. I love <laughs> right? it. No more people. No, there you go. <laughs> unlimited, unlimited wine variety. What variety would it be? That is so easy. Domaine Romani Conti from Burgundy, which is a Pinot Noir. And oh. yeah, it's pricey. But since there's an unlimited oh. <laughs> supply and budget, that's awesome. I'm good to go. I'll All see right. you in 20 years. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> just keep dropping down those cases. Exactly. Not a no problem. need for a rescue, actually. Just leave me here. I'm, a, I'm good. And now a word from our sponsor. Dracaena Wines loves to give back. There are so many fur babies that deserve to find their forever home. We would love to be able to help as many as possible. If you are part of a nonprofit organization or know of a nonprofit organization that would like to hold a fundraiser, please contact us at contact at DracaenaWines.com or visit our website, DracaenaWines.com, to fill out the form. How does the fundraiser work? It is super simple and costs your group absolutely nothing. Together, we will choose a month that your group will be sponsored. During the month, you promote the fundraiser just like any other event you'd hold. At the end of the month, we will donate 20% of the sales to your organization. The donations will be made in the name of each individual who purchased the wine so that you know exactly who helped the animals. Our goal is to raise as much funds as we possibly can and to help as many animals as possible. So please help us help as many fur babies as we possibly can. All right, so Pinot Noir and a very specific Pinot Noir. Okay. Yes. All right. Now, I have not had that, but I will have to... uh, I will have to uh, try. Um, Tell me about the wine, because I know nothing about that. So I know Burgundy, but... Yeah. So that was in Red, White, and Drunk all over as well. I got to taste that. And again, people say, how do you get to taste all these? It's because of the readers I bring with me. It's it's not me. I'm not special. It's Mm -hmm. they know, especially with these tasting rooms that are not open to the public, um, they know that I, I'm bringing with me the audience who's going to read the book or yeah. listen to the podcast or whatever. So I got to taste Domaine Romani Conti with the owner and winemaker, Aubert de Villain. And he actually made me do a guessing game, a blind tasting guessing game, which is really daunting, unnerving. And um, we went down to the, the wine cellar or the library of old bottles. And they were all cobwebby. And the only thing I noticed is they seem to start in the early 1900s and then go up to current day. And so he said, turn around. And so be, so I, I was turning around, but I noticed he was starting to pull from the middle, middle You were cheating. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm, I'm turned. <laughs> so I thought, oh, he's probably somewhere in the middle. Anyway, he, I had to guess. I said, uh, 1950s. He said, very good. <laughs> and then I thought, <laughs> now, not, nothing's going to help me now. Um, because I thought, oh, roughly middle. And I wanted to say something like, well, the rains in 54 just have to rule oh. that one out. And because I wasn't going to be us. So I, I just, I took a stab in the middle and went with 1956. And it was right. He thought I was some sort of savant, but really I was the idiot <laughs> who's <was> just guessing. <laughs> but yeah, there's some newfound respect and he let me, you know, have another glass and it was like, oh, all right, yeah. we're friends now, right? <laughs> okay. Woohoo. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. So yeah, I can get why you'd want that on the deserted island. Yes. Uh, but now I'm going to flip it to, because you are a foodie. So now here's your wine. Mm. What is the one food, again, unlimited, but that's the only food, other than the coconuts, <laughs> what is the food right. that you're going to want to be there? So because I have to maintain my health in order to drink the wine and stay alive, <laughs> I, I would pick a comfort food like chicken parmesan. The way Miles makes it is it's very lightly breaded, and then he he has a homemade tomato sauce he puts on it, and then over that, he oven bakes um cheese and it is the most glorious thing i love it and it's not too unhealthy and i he always asks what do you want for dinner with a smile on his face because he knows chicken parm Um. please (laughs) (laughs) my husband's answer to that is pizza 
Oh yeah, That's always really pizza. Good comfort food. Always yeah. pizza. Mm -hmm. Can't go wrong. <laughs> All right, with those. so Pinot Noir and chicken parm. Okay. Yep. All right. So, with that, now that you're stranded on the desert, <laughs> deserted <laughs> island, we're gonna let you come off. We're gonna, you know, that rescue is finally gonna come. But so, where we already said uh, where people can find you, but what's the app and you know what about the socials where where can people find you so everything my website is the hub for everything so nataliemclean.com and on there you'll find the mobile app the tools etc all my links to socials which tend to be at natalie mclean if if it's not that it'll be at natalie mclean wine um, if someone already snagged my name um but yeah that's that's where you can find me and and everything else that I do, the books, et cetera. Oh, I also teach online food and wine pairing classes, which is really okay. fun. I'm loving that. Um, How so, does that work? I've seen these before. How does that work? Are you sending out a list of what to buy? Yes. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm not texting them the wine or anything like that, but I have, I have students um, from all over the world, lots from the U S Canada, of course, but Australia, Brazil, the Netherlands, um, and we all gather and it's, it's so much fun because we the real focus is on food and wine pairing, which I find is accessible to everyone. So both novices will take the course, but also even those who have a lot of certifications and professional like sommeliers are in there too, because a lot of the professional designations don't dive into food and wine pairing as much as I do in my courses. So I welcome everybody who wants to uh, join our happy little gang. Um, it's it's a lot of fun and a lot of experimentation um and the other thing is the memoir that i'm writing right now Lori. i'd also invite people if they want to be a beta reader beta reader means you just go through it and give me comments um you don't have to be a wine expert it's just how does this book strike you and you can with your comments, I'm trying to make the book better before it is published. I have a publisher, but beta reading is a very important step in the process. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if any of your listeners, if you, anybody would like to be a beta reader, I welcome you. I have a friend from college who is an author, um, and he started right. He's like, I'm just going to write this book, one book. And he's, he's about 12 books in and amazing writer. Like he found this skill that he just didn't know he had. He unleashed this author in him. And wow. it, uh, his sto his stories are incredible. And his very first book, I was a beta reader for it. And it's really inter it's an re interesting thing. So I, if anybody wants to do it, give it a try. It's kind of cool. Because yes. uh, like there were things I was like, um, I don't understand how she got from here to here. You know, exactly. like things like that. Because in his brain, it made... A lot of sense. So he's yeah. looking for, you know, the authors are looking for people who aren't inside their brain to to hear the story. So Precisely. definitely. It, yeah, that's that's it. So, again, you don't have to be an editor or a writer or a wine expert. You don't have to be an expert just to love yeah. books, wine right. and words. And and um, but people will catch things. It's like, oh, you just slipped into the past tense. It doesn't even have to be that technical. As you say, yeah. like a timeline that doesn't make sense or you've introduced a character um, and you didn't give a first name or something like weird right. stuff, right? Yeah. And, and that is so helpful. So again, if anybody wants to, is interested, you can just email me, natalie okay. at nataliemcclain.com. You're very good at the, at the marketing aspect. Just keep everything <laughs> the same. Natalie McLean. Right. <laughs> I wish I had had a simpler name, like, you know, Pat Smith or something. But <laughs> then you probably couldn't have patsmith.com because there would be true. So that would have been way too hard or you I would have to pay a lot of money for Pat Smith. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. That was one of the first things I learned when I was doing the marketing, learning about marketing for the winery is be consistent. So it's, it's Dracita wines across the board. Everything's Dracita wines. And when yes. a new thing comes out like TikTok, I don't do TikTok. But I went in and took Dracina wines, you That's know, good. and, yes. you know, so whatever the, you know, new things come out, go in and snag your name so that somebody else doesn't. So exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that is all awesome. good advice. <laughs> yes. All right. So when I was on your podcast, you had the hot seat questions, the quick mm -hmm. round. So I am resurrecting my game of opposites just for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I think. Just for you. So um, it is very simple. There is no right or wrong answer, and it is super, super fast. Okay. Uh, no, or right, uh, no right or wrong answer. All it is is I'm going to give you two words that are opposites. 
Okay. And one of them hopefully resonates with you and you just say which one resonates with you. Cool. So it is not, it is not, there's no right or wrong. That's all I can say. Like a and, resort, what is it? Resource? Res, I can never say it. That Those images, resource. Oh, yeah. Where, re, yeah. The, the black. Whatever it is. The black yeah, ink thing. What do you see? Yeah. What do you see? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So my cool. my wonderful ending comes from a friends episode where Phoebe <laughs> Phoebe it. is trying to get Joey or Joey is traveling cross country and he doesn't know whether to go the north route or the south route. So this was what she did to get him to decide which way to go. So big research on my end to, to figure this <laughs> I out. I love it. Very scientific. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> So we're going to start off with non-wine related terms. Okay. And then we'll kind of get into wine related terms. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So here we go. Uh, night or day? Day. Okay. Sunset or sunrise? Sunrise. Black or white? Black. Walk or run? Walk. Food or drink? Drink, drink, drink. <laughs> <laughs> Old world or new world? Oh, old world, I guess. <laughs> Sweet or dry? Dry. Red or white? Red. Bubbles or still? Mm, still. Oak or stainless? Mm, stainless. Drink now or drink later? Oh, drink now, right away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before I even get in the door. <laughs> exactly. Uh, decant on doorstep. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Blender varietal. Oh, varietal. I guess because Pinot. Anyway. Vintage or non vintage? Vintage. Cork or screw cap? Cork. Napa or Sonoma? Ooh, Sonoma. Commercial or indigenous? Indigenous. Bordeaux or Rhone or oh. Burgundy? <laughs> oh. It's me. Oh no, Burgundy. Should I prioritize them? Yeah. Burgundy, Bordeaux. I, I, I Bordeaux. Guess, yes. Yeah. Bordeaux. Um, warm climate or cool climate? Cool. Cool climate. See, that's it. Oh wow! Whoo! What a relief! My goodness, it, it felt like a like a quiz, a school quiz, or a spelling bee. He's like, oh, what am I revealing here? Anyway. It is, you know, so it is kind of similar to that. It is similar to like what you're revealing or whatever. But yeah. um, so interesting is usually the people who say day, yeah. usually always say sunrise. You yes. did, you did say that, but then they also usually say white and you did say yeah. black. So that was a little, mm -hmm. that was a little twist of what, with the other thing. And then yeah, I like wearing black especially on a wine tour, I call them my buffet well, <laughs> pants. So if I wear white, you're going to get spills yeah, on them no first. Waste. And then you're going to look like a tub of lard if you for me, if you don't look, <laughs> wear, wear black. Anyway, that's what I'm thinking of. That's where my brain went. I was like, oh no, yeah. black pants yeah. for sure. Yeah. White, white and wine <clears throat> clothing yeah. definitely, definitely yeah. does not go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And then usually if people say old world, they usually say drink later. And if they say new world, they oh, usually yeah. say drink now. Instant um, gratification, but with burgundy. Yes. There, yeah. <laughs> so that's it. No, no other than that, that. I'm sure there's. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. You can thank Phoebe or whoever wrote Phoebe's lines. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I love it. And it's neat that you gave a little interpretation as well. That's yeah. uh, Cool. Yeah. Well, Look, you know, you can't can't take the science out of me. I always got to throw that science stuff in there. I love it. That's what makes you interesting, among oh, many well, other things. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining me and letting taking time out of your day to share your story with me because it is an incredible story. And uh, I absolutely you. love meeting people who are so into wine. And so down to earth at the same time. And thank you. It was it was my pleasure to talk to you and interview you. And I really, really hope one day we get to meet in real life. <laughs> Absolutely, Lori. This, this has been so much fun. I just, we yacked away. And uh, like my interview of you last week and this one, it's just, I, I know, I know we would have so much fun if we could just get together. together. Yes, absolutely. Class or three. <laughs> yeah, Thank you so absolutely. Much. Thank you absolutely. And borders are open again. So <laughs> there, there's potential. But um, yeah. And honestly, you know, I have, this is horrible. I have not been to Canada, really. I've spent Ugh. one weekend in Montreal mm -hmm. as a girl's girls kind of getaway weekend of yeah. which we drove so we spent wow. more time on the road than i think than that um that was when we were in jersey so i drove oh, up okay. yeah. um 
And then the only other time I've been in Canada was uh, a gambling trip to um, Windsor. Okay. So we flew yeah. into Detroit and uh, met my brother and sister-in-law and then drove over to gamble. Oh, wow. <laughs> and that was wow. it. So I need to explore. Uh, and honestly, I don't even think I've had Canadian wine. <gasps> Okay, now it's real confession time. Um, you would love it. Like either the Okanagan or Niagara are great starting places, but you know, even Quebec, Eastern Townships or Nova Scotia is beautiful. They all have great wine regions that I'm sure you'd love. Like lots of wineries that have restaurants, beautiful scenery. I mean, it's just, it's lo lovely places to visit. Okay. Well, I have to get on United and hey, United, yes, here we go. You right. hear it, you hear it. Natalie exactly. is telling me I need to come there. So United, I need to, you know, you need to get me there. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, I Lori. do look forward to meeting you in person one day. And Absolutely. it's it's 845 in the morning. So I do not have anything clinking with you today. But I will do a <laughs> virtual virtual, yes, a virtual exactly. clink with you and say slancha and enjoy slancha. your week. <laughs> oh, you too, Lori. Bye for now. <laughs> Bye. Have a great Bye. one. You too. Bye. This has been another episode of Exploring the Wine Glass. Thanks for listening. If you have suggestions on what topics you would like me to discuss, please reach out on social media. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as Exploring the Wine Glass. I am also on LinkedIn as Lori Hoytbud. Of course, you can always email me at exploringthewineglass at gmail.com. If you enjoyed what you heard, please rate, review, and subscribe to help others find me more easily. And most importantly, tell your wine-loving friends, because if you like the podcast, they will too. Music is Wine by Kevens. Until next week, slancha. Give me the red, red wine. Give me the white, white wine. Give me the sweet, red wine.